This is an ABC color presentation. From Hollywood, the heart of the entertainment world, the Hollywood Palace. With your hostess, John Crawford. Tonight, Alan and Rossi. Godfrey Cambridge. Jack Jones. The Eight Rodos. Johnny Summers. Stebbings Boxer. Billy Yapoi. Mitchell Ayers of the Hollywood Palace Orchestra. This portion brought to you by the men and women of your investor-owned, business-managed electric light and power companies. These people who work hard to make your electric service so good, you never have to think about it. And keep it so low in price, it's one of your best family bargains. Your investor-owned electric companies are America in Action, skilled business management, four million share owners who have invested in the business, and customers like you everywhere, using more and more service, all working together to bring this nation the best electric service in the world. And now, from the Hollywood Palace, here is your hostess, one of the screen's great ladies, the glamorous Joan Crawford! A very good evening to you, and I'm so happy to be your hostess this evening in the Hollywood Palace. You know, I love being back in Hollywood. I used to always come here just to see my friends and have fun, but now I just go to a refrigerator and see what soft drink they have. And you know something? It's usually the one I want. I have very loyal friends. Our show tonight is an exciting one. And let's begin with a fantastic troupe from Germany. The Eight Rodos.
photos, aren't they marvelous? And now I'm most happy to be able to present our next guest, one of America's outstanding humorists, Mr. Godfrey Cambridge. <laughs> Uh, everybody complains about television, but uh, I'm an exception. Uh, I don't generally complain about it. I only have one minor complaint, and uh, that is one commercial, uh, The White Knight. <laughs> you know, that nitwit on the horse goes by, turns everything white. Lord, I hope he never passes me. <laughs> I got enough problems, you know. Turn me white, and I'll start running around feeling guilty all the time, you know. <laughs> But I feel good. I'm on a show with my favorite actress, Joan Crawford, who's really great, you know. <laughs> See that? That's what I like, a unanimous decision. But it's true, a really great actress, and I've always dreamed of doing a movie in which Joan Crawford and another fantastic actress would fight desperately for my love. <laughs> it's a fantasy. <laughs> I wish I could do a realistic one. You know, maybe I'd jump out from behind a rock. But, uh... <laughs> everything happens to me. You know, a couple of months ago, I was in Los Angeles, and I decided to rent a car. And I must have called kind of late, because the only car they had left for me was a 1965 red Ford with Alabama license plates on it. <laughs> I mean, I can't win with that car. I mean, if I drive through a Negro neighborhood, I feel like I gotta turn on the lights inside the car. <laughs> Say, don't mess around, baby. It's a soul brother. <laughs> and then if I park it two inches too close to a hydrant, go away and leave it, a Negro cop comes by, looks at that plate and says, Alabama, the way they've been treating my people. <laughs> then I get the ticket. And then if I'm driving by, I get stopped by a white cop. He figures I'm a freedom rider. I get the ticket anyway. You know, one of those John Birch cops who fires three warning shots in your leg. Do 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 do. And gets back in the red, white, and blue police car. <laughs> but everything happens to me. Not too long ago, uh, I went to Las Vegas in August for a convention. Took my wife, fool, and uh, it was weird because as we're coming in, the stewardess announces that the temperature is 114 degrees. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is you say, come on, you're putting me on. There is no place in the United States that hot. But then she cops out by saying, like, the humidity is only nine, which means you're in a dry furnace, right? <laughs> so why don't I stagger off the plane, and I'm in the 11-button mo here with the attache case because I'm changing our image. <laughs> No more traveling in them overalls, folks. Get you an Ivy League suit, you know. No more of that fried chicken in a brown paper sack. Get you an attache case with the fried chicken in it. So I ain't giving up everything just to live with y'all. Something still sacred, gang. So the wife and I stagger off the planet, stifling heat, and one of the local yokels runs over to us and he says... 114 degrees, boy, I bet you cutting people sure do love this heat. <laughs> he said, Nick, we've been out of Africa for over 300 years. He said, man, if it ain't air conditioned back at that hotel, me and my woman will be picking it in the morning. I mean, what does he think I am, an Ashanti tribesman or something? He probably figures I'll get in my walk canoe and go down the strip in Las Vegas going, <laughs> With my Karari blowgun. <laughs> Say, me come from Africa seeking white girl for queen of tribe. Pay $35 a week and fringe benefits. <laughs> of course, I had a clever way of getting back at him because what I would do is I would run through the gambling casino and yell out hip things like, Gambling is morally wrong! <laughs> that to shake him up. <laughs> I tell him, you know what I do is I go out by the swimming pool and I take about an hour and a half and I put on my suntan lotion. <laughs> Try to drive them crazy because they never knew whether I needed any or not. <laughs> so I'm going to go to the supermarket and tell the man, give me some suntan oil. He asked me, who's it for? <laughs> 114 degrees, I got to burn, fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are my people. Don't take it personal, friends. <laughs> okay. Things are going very well now. I'm working for a first class show, The Hollywood Palace. And when I arrived at the airport this time, they sent a limousine for me. 
a chauffeur-driven limousine with a white chauffeur. <laughs> That's progress. <laughs> and he suggested... <laughs> and he suggested that I drive and he sit in the back. <laughs> And then I said, well, why don't we sit up there in the front together? That way, if people see us together, they won't know what to talk about first. <laughs> so finally, we compromised, and I flipped a coin, and I sat in the trunk. <laughs> well, let's face it, friends. One thing is true, and that is, you ain't going back to Europe, and I ain't going back to Africa. We got too much going here. Thank you. <laughs> of the electric power companies? It's a fact. More than four million Americans are direct owners, shareholders of these electric companies. Nearly everyone else, probably you too, is an indirect owner through his savings accounts, pension plan, or insurance policies. It's because the more than 300 investor-owned companies are so widely owned and under sound business management that this nation enjoys the most and best electric service in the world. That's why we like to say, you've got good things going for you with service by the investor-owned electric light and power companies. Of course, I may seem a bit partial, but this charming young lady happens to be my favorite singer. I guess it's because she always hits the spot, and for those who think young, here she is, Miss Joni Summers.
know, it's so nice, Joni, being on the same show with you. Thanks, boss. <laughs> Millions of people hear your voice on that commercial now. What is the name of it? Come Alive. Ah, yes. Yes, now I remember. But tonight they can see how charming and pretty you really are. And thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Joni will be back later. Now, here's something else for, for those who think young. Believe me, I see, I've seen them, and that's why I'm stuttering, because I'm going to get the off stage just as fast as I can. They do some amazing tricks. They're from England, and they're called the Stebbings Boxers. And if you'll excuse me, they think younger than I. So goodbye. <laughs>
items in your family budget today is your electric service. And you can depend on America's investor-owned electric light and power companies planning and working under sound business management to keep your electric service low in price. Always one of the biggest bargains you can buy. And now, dear friends, that wonderful Jones boy, Jack Jones. More than the greatest love the world has known. This is the love I give to you alone. More than the simple words I try to say, I only live to love you for each day. Sleeping, laughing, weeping Longer than always is a long, long time But far beyond forever You'll be mine I know I'll never live before And my heart is very sure No one Yesterday, and life was fine just yesterday. Now, overnight, you're gone. We had dreams to spare, the thrill was there. Yesterday, now it all seems so far away. I face the lonely dawn. Must I get used to missing you? Must tomorrow find me lost? You're my only love, the only love I'll ever be. Bring back yesterday.
You know something that was delightful. The last Do you mean time, that really? No, the last time I heard you was in the Persian room, but the time before that was when you were two days old. Besides your mother and father and the doctor, I was the third person to see. How was my intonation then? Lousy. <laughs> no, really. Uh, I've known this child since uh, the second day he was born. It's, uh, it's nice to see you again. Well, don't squat. <laughs> Now, would you stay long enough to sing a number with my girl, Joni? I would love to. Okay. All right. Joni! It's my girl and my boy. And now, singing together for the first time on TV, Jack Jones and Joni Summers. Uh, I want you to know that this is Joan Crawford's arrangement. <laughs> Joni? If you're ever in a jam, here I am. Jack, if you ever need a pal, I'm your gal. If you're feeling sad and lonely, there's a service I can render as the one who loves you only. I can be so warm and tender, call me, don't be afraid, you can call me, maybe it's late, but just call me, tell me and I'll be around. Okay, that case, when it seems your friends desert you, there's somebody thinking of you, I'm the one who never hurts you, maybe that's because I love you. If you let me, I will always stay by you. You got to trust me, that's how it must be. There's so much that I can do for you. If you call, I'll be right with you. You and I should be together. Take the love. Just call me, tell me and I'll be around. Hello? Hello? Is that you, Joni? Yes, this is Joni. Doesn't sound like Joni. Sure, this is Joni. Oh, well, listen, uh, Joni, I'm in a jam. Could you, uh, could you lend me $50? Okay, I'll tell her when she comes in. <laughs> Just call me, tell me, and I'll be We'll be back with <laughs> Alan and Rossi. Lily Yokoi from Japan. And lots more in the Hollywood Palace. This portion of the Hollywood Palace has been brought to you by the men and women of your investor-owned, business-managed electric light and power companies. The lovely lady you are about to meet is a member of one of Japan's most famous entertainment families. They call her the ballerina on the golden bicycle, Lily Yokoi.
And now, Ms. Yokoi will perform one of the most difficult of all feats, a series of pirouettes on the golden bicycle. See famous old Sturbridge Village in Massachusetts. An authentic recreation of an early American village. Lovely homes, some over 200 years old. Like the Stephen Fitch House, built in 1737. If you were painting this charming old home to protect it from the weather, you'd want to use quality house paint, Sherwin-Williams. After all, it lasts years longer than ordinary house paints. And that means Sherwin-Williams saves you money because you don't have to paint as often. Why settle for less on your home, even if it isn't 200 years old? Sherwin-Williams, the people who bring you high quality paints for home and industry, look for this cover the earth trademark. Now let's say hello dare to the original odd couple of comedy, Alan and Rossi. And here is Steve Rossi. No, I'm your Avon representative. Are you kidding? Marty, did you, uh, did you do your good deed for the day? Yeah, me and five kids, we helped an old lady cross the street, and boy, was she mad. Why? She didn't want to go. <laughs> Problem. All right, now, who, uh, who taught you how to swim? Huh? My father taught me how to swim. He father took me out in a lake in a canoe, uh -huh. and when we got out in the middle, he threw me overboard, and then he rode away. Hmm. That must, must have been hard. It was harder getting out of burlap bag. <laughs> Listen, what do you think is the hardest thing about being a Boy Scout? Selling them cookies. Wait. <laughs> Weren't you supposed to put your hand I know, on I forgot to do that. No. <laughs> Hey, is this, uh, is this merit badge for bravery? That yeah, one? I killed a bear with my club. <laughs> killed a bear with your club? Uh-huh. Weren't you scared? No, there are 50 of us in my club. <laughs> right, now, what was, the, what was the bravest thing you ever did, huh? I stand up here and tell these jokes. 
What, what's this merit badge for? For being the most intelligent, the most handsomest, the most smartest Boy Scout in America. Mm, what's this one for? For being humble. <laughs> Do you remember? I'd like to pay tribute to a great American on his birthday, Richard Stans. Richard Stans? Happy birthday. Hey, Happy wait birthday a minute. I never, Richard Stans. I never heard of Richard Stans. You never heard? Never You're heard ki- of him. You're I kidding. I'm in. I never heard of him. I pledge allegiance to the flag and to the republic for Richard Stans. <laughs> Hey, do you, do you remember anything about your first aid training? Yeah, I saw a guy lying in the street bleeding, and I remembered my first thing for first aid. What I you... put my head between my legs to keep from fainting. <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, you ever been bitten by, by a snake? I was huh? bitten by a snake, and I cut open a wound, and I tried to suck out the blood, but I was in a lot of trouble. Why? He bit me on the back of the neck. <laughs> Do you know how to make those uh, smoke signals? Uh, with yeah, the, you know, smoke with the signal, you the take thing? your hat yeah. and you put it over the flames and then you make the messages with the hat. Yeah, what was your message? Help, my hat's on fire. <laughs> Did you ever meet uh, uh, Smokey the Bear, Mark? I met Smokey, my friend Harvey and I, we went in the woods. We're in the woods, And yes. we met Smokey the Bear and he showed us how to put out the fire uh-huh. and he told us a lot of things about first aid and about things about safety and then he did the most unusual thing I ever saw mm, what'd he do? he ate my friend Harvey <laughs> do you always uh, tell the truth Marty? N- not all the time hey, well don't you realize it's important to tell the truth otherwise why do you think that George Washington told his father that he chopped down the cherry tree cause he still had the axe in his hand <laughs> Hey, what have you got in that canteen, huh? Booze. Yeah. I got booze in my canteen. I'm going to tell your scoutmaster. Go ahead, it's Dean Martin. <laughs> if I any... get any fatter, I'll be re- eligible for group insurance. <laughs> huh? Hey, uh, do you... <laughs> do you have any... Uh, I questions? just threw that in while I was waiting for you to give me the next question. I know. I know. <laughs> hey, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask me? Yeah, do you know the difference between a horse and a girl? Um, mm. No. Oh, you must have some wonderful dates. Do you have any hobbies that you're interested hobbies, in? Hobbies, yeah. Oh. I collect bees. I have a thousand bees. You have a thousand They're bees. in my house, buzzing around in my house. All the scouts have to have a hobby, so I collect bees. Now, wait. They're in my house, buzzing. Marty, when you go in your house, wouldn't the bees sting you? No, I have them in a room in my house. They're in my room in the house, buzzing around. All right, now, when you go in your room, the bees would sting you, wouldn't they? No, because I have them. The bees? The I bees have them in a drawer. <laughs> I can't remember where you told me to put them. (laughs) I put them in a drawer and they're in a little box in my room in the house. I don't know where you are, Marty. I don't know where you are, but I got a thousand bees that are in my drawer in a box. They're in a little box. Won't the bees suffocate? Oh, the heck with them. It's only a hobby. (laughs) Now, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that the the bees are are still in the drawer? And they're going to stay in the drawer till you come up with the right answer. You know something? The only problem with you two is you have no humor. We have no humor. 
That's why it's nice. No, you're really wonderful. Oh, thank you, John. You know, Marty and I are going to be doing She's a picture. She's beautiful. Yes, she is, isn't she? Yeah. I yeah. wish she was one of my hobbies. <laughs> Better than the bees. Better yeah. than the bees. <laughs> you know, Mark, uh, uh, I was telling Joan that... I'm uh, Joan, he's I Mark. <laughs> if he ever makes that mistake, we'll have him sent away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just going to say that... Uh, <laughs> what show are we on? <laughs> Over here's the camera. I was just going to say that... <laughs> And Marty and I are going to be doing a picture at uh, Paramount called uh, Alan and Rossi, The Last of the Secret Agents. And I'm going to be doing some love scenes in the picture. And I thought since you're one of the world's greatest actresses, that maybe you could give me a few pointers. Hmm? You think you could? Well, just be natural and be yourself. It's very simple. Could we just run down a little bit of a romantic scene? Sure. Hmm? Right. Love it. Watch this. <laughs> Joan, I, I love you. I love you, I need you, I want you. Oh, Joan. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Hey, I'm in the picture, too. I wish you luck. I love you, Joan. I love you. I really love you. I love you! <laughs> I wish you'd hate me a little so I could have some fun. <laughs> On the day you were born, do you know what your dad did? To celebrate your arrival, he gave away cigar after cigar. After cigar, after cigar, after cigar, after cigar, after cigar, after cigar. All in your honor. Now, Father's Day is June 19th. A good time to give Dad cigars in his honor. Here's the Dutch Master Showcase. 34 assorted cigars in a handsome redwood box. $4.95. Or give Dad the Twin Valet Pack with 20 Dutch Masters Presidents. Or the Dutch Masters Executive Case with 25 Panatellas. And there are many other Father's Day gifts to choose from. Give Dad Dutch Masters. After all, fathers and fine cigars just seem to go together. If I may, I would like to read some lovely words for you. They are words by Milton Geiger that tell of love and joy, and of a light that shines in a world that is often darkest in the middle of the day. They tell of hope, and I know that in their loveliness they speak the truth, because they say that our last best hope rests in our children. This is about two children we all grew up with. Our thanks to little children. Our gratitude to Alice, who adventured down a rabbit hole and brought a child's perfect reason to a loony wonderland. That for all its wonder was mad, but for all its madness was quite wonderful. Our thanks to all the Alices in all the wonderland of Earth who bring sanity to chaos, innocence to confusion, laughter to chagrin, and love to barren places. Our thanks to little boy Blue that most responsible of shepherds, who in his untarnished soul knows a sheep from a costume wolf, and real wool from shoddy, he knoweth the greenest pastures for our spirits. He goeth fishing in the still waters, and taketh us along, and learneth us the ropes. He and Alice make us what we are as much as we mold them, or even more. 
They are responsible for us. They share with us the magic of their healing in a world of wounding and of hurt. They are the good companions of our loneliness. Our Earth is a tiny moat in the awful cauldron of the universe. We are ringed with fire and iron, yet the children cause us to have courage. They cause us to have hope and to know joy and to face tomorrow bravely in a house of gingerbread and bells. They make illusion strength. They make enchantment truth. A mighty fortress is their trust. Authors, authors of our little Alice's and little boy's bloom. You parents everywhere upon our lovely, our little audacious star. Our thanks. Author of the universe and of the wisp of grass for whispering to us about the majestic machinery of creation, the best idea of all, the little children, our love, homage, and our thanks. Alex? Keep your no sense in wonder and belief alive. For all of us who dwell in Wonderland, for if, if they die, we die. Reason, pure child, with your unblemished child's logic. Reason against all the unreason and insanities that spoil our garden. Mad Hatters have had matters long enough their way in Wonderland. Boy Blue, with your silver horn, drown the bugles and the war drums. Show us, small shepherd, the height where man can be brother to his fellow man. Lead us to green pastures where there is enough for all, and where all are one in justice and tranquility. Alice, Alice, whatever your name, Boy blue of every color. Little children of all the peoples yearning for the right and for the light walk hand in hand through Wonderland. Show us the way. We who gave you being need you now. Now and forevermore. You are responsible for us. Give us your hand. Give us your hand. A woman can recite the most complicated recipe, but how many can name the ingredients in a headache tablet? I'm Joan Fontaine. If you don't want drugs you know nothing about, take bufferin. It's faster, more effective than aspirin without adding a lot of other drugs to your bloodstream. Simple aspirin loses almost half its pure pain reliever before it ever gets to work. Bufferin rushes almost twice as much of this pure pain reliever to your headache. Instead of tablets with drugs you know nothing about, take Bufferin. I do, 
More effective than aspirin without adding a lot of other drugs. Bufferin. Somebody put this banned cream deodorant on my desk. How should I take it? Daily. Ban cream protects you from odor day and night. It's the famous long-lasting cream deodorant. Ban cream. Try it. You know, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed being with you in the Hollywood Palace. The hour has passed so quickly, it's hard to realize it's almost time to say good night. It really is. Thank you so much for being with us. Good night. This portion of the Hollywood Palace has been brought to you by Bristol Myers, makers of Bufferin, an analgesic that's faster, more effective than aspirin, without adding a lot of other drugs to your bloodstream. And by Consolidated Cigar Corporation, makers of Dutch Master Cigars. Step up to the fine cigar, Dutch Masters. Travel arrangements for overseas acts and promotional consideration furnished by Pan American World Airways. This is Dick Tufel speaking. Forget next week at the Hollywood Palace, the Amon Brothers, the Batman, Adam West, Elaine Dunn, Martha Ray, Tony Sandler and Ralph Young, Henny Youngman, and your host, Milton Burrow. things to do. Swimming, tennis, volleyball, creative arts, dancing, singing. Yes, it's fun to sing around the campfire. Join the campfire.